how's it going? Today I'm filming my daughter's sixth grade curriculum video. So excited. Um, she's definitely moving on up middle grade now. And thanks to everyone who is joining me. I just want to mention um, at the beginning of the video that this channel is kind of like booktube-ish and like homeschool videos that I update my daughter's progress throughout the year. I share a lot of books, so I would love for anyone to subscribe who likes um, following other readers. You know, I pretty much read literary fiction. My daughter reads a lot of middle grade fantasy. And then throughout the entire year, I pretty much highlight her homeschool journey. Alongside that, I show like thrift hauls. I'm starting to do more of those and like book hauls and like holiday stuff. Like I do like Christmas videos and, um, you know, like Easter, birthday stuff like that, what I got my daughter throughout the year. And um, yeah, I'm starting to add a little bit more stuff like kind of shopping hauls and things like that. And yeah, so thanks so much for joining me. So let's get started. So I'm going to start with her planner. This is from School Nest. It is a student planning notebook and I want to open it to show you guys what schedule. So I didn't have her fill it out yet. I'm going to have her do this at the beginning of the sixth grade year. I want to go over her schedule first, and um, I'm going to link everything that I, that I can for you guys in the description. So basically, I'll show you real quick this planner. This is a School Nest planner. I really like the, how it has like a book list, and it's real simple, just like to log the books. That was one of the reasons I got it. And then it has this like weekly assignment section, and it has like the month, which I'm going to have her fill in to you know get used to keeping a planner and things like that so this is pretty much it it kind of repeats the scheduling and it, i like how it lets you fill it out yourself this is our first time using this and i like how it gives you um samples examples in the background okay so now i wrote our schedule in pencil because our schedule is always kind of loose at the beginning of before we start the year and because like we always kind of change things, you know, as things. So this is like the beginning idea I have for the schedule. Okay, so Monday through Friday, she will do math, which is Saxon math. And then she'll do language arts Monday through Thursday, except handwriting, which I'm gonna show you guys. The handwriting book is Monday through Friday. And then we're gonna be doing science Mondays and Tuesdays. And then history, Wednesdays and Thursdays. And then art, she will do Monday through Friday. So geography, I forgot to mention, goes alongside with history. Uh, yet we will only do geography one day. So we're going to be do doing geography on Wednesdays. And then also bought her keyboarding from Handwriting Without Tears. I bought like a digital copy from Rainbow Resource. So she, I think it's like the fifth grade. They definitely didn't have past fifth grade. So I just got her the fifth grade keyboarding and she'll be doing that. So I just put, went ahead and put keyboarding every day. It's going to be kind of short. I don't think the lessons will take very long. And then after she's finished all of this stuff, Monday through Friday, you know, I have it on the different days. Every day after every all of this is finished, she will do 35 minutes of independent reading. And um, on Fridays, she has Minecraft class, which and from outschool.com and then she also does piano and then also I separated a schedule for the months I just did so basically one of the things we're focusing on for the sixth grade year is um, illustration sorry if you can hear my dog snoring that's what that noise is sorry he's sleeping under me um, he's sleeping under the table I'm filming on okay so uh, I did a monthly schedule of just different illustrators that we're gonna be highlighting throughout the year and then at the end of the year, March, April, and May, I put aside time for her to do a special book project. And I'm going to have her, she's going to make a picture book. And I'm going to show you guys the book that inspired that. So that's the first thing uh, you guys want to show you. This will be the first thing that she does. She'll um, go over this every morning. And then the second thing that she will do is this book, Everyday Amazing, Fantastic Facts for Every Day of the Year. And I really love this book, it's really cool. So it has like different um, dates and it has like a little fact, informational thing that happened on that day. And then also 
like August 10th. It has like different facts. And then it has like someone who was born that day and it has like the date and the name of the person. And then it has someone who actually says arrivals and departures. So that's, it has someone who died actually on that day. <laughs> um, yeah, it's kind of, yeah, but interesting, but yeah. So these will be the first two things that my daughter does every single morning to kind of like get her started with, um, the, you know, the planner and the date. And then I'm going to jump you guys into math. We are using Saxon math. I'm going to show you that really quick. And then I'm going to go back to language arts, which she, which she will continue. So for math, I believe this is the third year in a row we will be using Saxon. So I got her Saxon 7-6. And basically... This is a solution manual, so this just has all the answers, so I'll go put that aside. And then also first, I want to show you guys, I got her just a simple notebook. It has a pocket where she keeps these little math facts she wrote from previous years that her dad helped her come up with. My husband usually helps her with math. And this is just a blank graphing notebook. So I got her this to go along with her problems. And then the first thing you do from Saxon Math every day is you do this little like warm up, I call it. And I usually kind of divide these in half so she doesn't do the whole thing. And this is pretty much the first thing she'll do uh, every morning. I like to do math at the beginning of the day because it gives me time to do like household things, make breakfast, take my dogs out. And sometimes like my daughter might get up a little bit earlier than, than me. So she can just go ahead and start math because math takes her the longest out of any subject. And I like having her do math first because then I can just not have to sit there on the side of her, you know, the whole time and monitor her and like sit there with her. So I let her just do the math and then she'll check it or I'll check it or we'll check it together. And it takes her a while. So usually by the time I'm finished doing everything in the morning, she's wrapping up math. So this is the first thing she does as a warm up and it correlates you know, with the lessons here. And then she'll get out this and do Saxon math. I actually have her skip the warm up, and then I have her read the new concept each time. I usually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, prep soon. Like, you know, I'm filming this video in um, May, and we're gonna be starting homeschool. I think September 1st, we're gonna start this year. We're gonna start a little bit later. We usually start in August, but I have a lot of things going on this summer, so I think that we're going to start September 1st is the goal, but I'm going to prep during the summer and I'm going to highlight stuff for her, but she does the new concept. She reads it by herself and then um, she does the lesson practice because that correlates directly to the new concept. So I highlight it for her ahead of time and then she does the mixed practice, which is like a review. And I have her do every other one. So either odds or evens, I go ahead and highlight it in ahead ahead of time. I prep. So or she'll sometimes she'll highlight it if I don't get to it in time, but usually I do. And yeah, so that's pretty much it. This is pretty much Saxon. It's working pretty good. I had her tested for the. I had her, I, I had her do a cat test actually like a month ago to make sure we were keeping up like with everything and things like that. And she, she did really well on the cat test. Um, we did it online and she pretty much placed like, very high, higher, way higher above grade level in pretty much every subject. Math was the only subject that she wasn't as high like level as all of the other subjects, but she was still above grade level in math. And um, math is not her favorite subject. So I would say Max Saxon's working out pretty good, you know, for us. So yeah, sorry. That's like enough rambling about Saxon. Okay. So continuing now, after she did the little um, planner math, now we go into language arts. And by that time, I'm usually finished with breakfast. She still does independent work. But so the first thing we're going to do, she will do is this daily handwriting practice from Evan Moore. So that's why I included... We usually do language arts Monday through Thursday, but I actually included it to do on Fridays only because of this book. So she will do this book, you know, Monday through Friday. And you can, you guys can see it's pretty short, like the lesson, some, and then it has some extended lessons. So that's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and here's Friday. So Friday's a little bit longer. 
And so it's kind of like a little wrap, little warm up throughout the week. And then Fridays usually, I think that's a pattern in this book. Friday is like a longer writing activity. I mainly got it so she could practice, you know, it's all cursive. And I didn't buy a separate cursive program this year for sixth grade because we did handwriting, handwriting without tears pretty much through since kindergarten. And they didn't have a sixth grade option. And I, I wasn't. I didn't, I, so yeah, I just got that. Kind of keeping it simple this year for a cursive now that she's getting older. Okay, so I also got this. And this is a sixth grade notebook also from School Ness. And this I got for her to do a variety of things for sixth grade, like some extra writing activities. Also got it, so on the left, it has like the little dotted lines. And then on the right, it's just like a traditional notebook style. And so and it has like a little area for the date. So I got this so she could do some extra cursive, like her name, her street, you know, her town, her address, things like that, that is not going to be in here. So I like her doing extra cursive practice. So I'm going to have her do that in here. And then I might come up with some other like writing assignments. I'm not sure. But I thought this notebook would be nice to just kind of keep a lot of extra stuff in and do like extra cursive practice. So I got that. Okay, so now continuing with writing. So I got two, a, a couple different things from Jack Chris Publishing. This I actually had to get on their website. They didn't have it on Amazon. So I wanna say one little thing. I wasn't happy with Jack Chris Publishing because I have a lot of issues with my mail delivery, USPS with like media mail and first class mail. A lot of times it gets lost. And this was like over $50 like for the two things i got winning winning with writing level six and then growing with grammar so anytime i have something kind of like over like between like 50 over to 100 dollars or more i usually try to do like priority mail or fedex or ups because my mailbox has lost expensive packages many times so i paid extra for shipping on jackchrispublishing.com i paid for expedited shipping and normally they ship media mail well they did not do expedited shipping but they charged me for it and I, I did get it, so I can't complain too much, but yet they never refunded me. I contacted them. So I just want to like mention that. I, like, I don't like bashing the company, but this is just the truth. And so what happens is it kind of discouraged me from buying them, buying their products in the future. So even though they, I think, continue on past six or eight, I won't be continuing with Jack Chris, Jack Chris Publishing because to me it's about the principle that it's just like they I, I called them and I emailed them and they just had, they never answered me like so i like wasn't happy with that that has nothing to do with the products okay i do like their products and that's a hard thing because i like their products but i just don't i wasn't happy with their customer service and saying that i just still want to show you guys continuing with language arts i got winning with writing this is the first time i tried winning with writing okay so winning with writing basically comes in two parts this is like for lesson one through 18. Yeah, this is lesson one through 18 and this is lesson 19 through 36. So they divide it half and half and then it comes with the little answer key. So that's the answer key and then this is part one. Lesson one, day one, main idea staying on topic and the writing process. So. This is just it's like a quick introduction to a main topic. And then it has read the four sentences. What's the main topic of the four sentences? So it just seems like it gets right to the point. And then, okay, so that's lesson one, day one. So this is pretty short. And then day two, day three, still reading about main ideas. Day four. And then day five. So even though we only do language arts let's see we do language arts monday through thursday what i think i'm gonna have her do is either do two in one day or um we will just continue this on the following monday this is actually something i haven't decided yet you guys while i'm filming this video because i'm gonna have my daughter's input on this so either we're going to just continue this on fridays so just like the handwriting she will do this also on fridays or we will figure something out because it has like, it's like planned out to do lesson one, day five, like five parts to the lesson. Cause the last lesson's pretty lengthy. 
So, final outline, drafting process, complete a rough draft. So, yeah, I haven't like hardcore gone over this book yet, but I will definitely be getting my daughter's input. And this is something that I'm kind of not, I haven't um, finalized yet, how the schedule will work for this. But that wants to show you guys the outline of it and things like that. I want to show you real quick the table of contents in case you're interested. So it's like, you know, all the different things. And it also has like a review of different descriptive writing, narrative writing, creative writing, main idea, point of view. And then, you know, I'm not going to go over this book because it's basically just it's the same thing. And then it just continues with the lessons. So yeah, so we're gonna be trying this for the first time. And then we're also gonna be continuing growing with grammar. Here is the answer key book. And then basically for going with grammar, you read, your, uh, my daughter reads the lesson 1.1. And then it correlates directly with the second book to do the actual worksheet for the lesson. It's usually two pages for the worksheet. So that's what she does. She will be doing for grammar this year. Okay, so that was the majority of the written things that she will be doing. Other than I told you, she is going to be making that picture book as a big project for sixth grade, which will also incorporate writing. But the next thing she'll be doing is a vocabulary book. And this is called Once Upon a Word, a Word Origin Dictionary. Now, this sixth grade notebook, I also want her to write the vocabulary words in here. I think what we're going to do is just take one page or maybe like towards the end of the book and write like vocabulary words. And so instead of, you know, not taking up one page <laughs> per word, but just using uh, an abundance of words on one page, you know, and, and leaving however many pages, probably won't take many pages out of here, but so she will be writing the words. I'm not sure if she's gonna write the definition, probably the word, and maybe the Latin, if it has like a Latin origin. My daughter is like being up, been obsessed with Latin lately. And she's actually doing like stuff in the summer with like Latin books. And I'll show, I'll show those in another video. But that's just like self-learning, something she wanted to do on her own. But yeah, so basically I got this book. I'm going to show you guys. Part one, word jungle, roots and branches. Part two. Uh, part three okay so it has like a few different parts and in the beginning it talks about you know where do words come from but it's mainly you know like a dictionary it talks about like roots of words that's very short but i definitely want her to read this read through this and all, oh yeah it has like charts and stuff on latin based roots which she's very interested in right now greek based and suffixes so okay you get y'all get that and then so what we're going to be doing after i'm gonna have her kind of like maybe we'll take the first we'll probably take the first week of homeschool to kind of read through this a little bit together and kind of review some of the stuff that it says but then basically it's like a through you know a through z total dictionary and i'm not sure how we're gonna do this yet i don't know if we're gonna i don't think we're gonna start at a I might just have her randomly pick a word. I think that'll be funner. We do that a lot with vocabulary books. I think I'm just gonna have her whatever whatever day, whatever you know she wants, whatever um, letter, word, whatever. Okay, so she'll just say she picks galaxy. Yeah, this is a long definition, so I probably won't have her write the definition, but I'll have her write the word, and I'll give her the option of of writing the root. I'm pretty. We're pretty much laid back about stuff like this, so. I just want her to have word exposure and I really was looking for a book that focused on the root because a lot of the vocabulary books we've used in the past, they're just kind of fun and beautiful, beautifully illustrated and I loved them and we, we got a lot out of them but a lot of them did not, I don't know if any of them had the, the root, you know, the origin of the word or anything like that. So that's why I picked this one and it has some illustrations. It's not as illustration heavy, of course, it's mainly the illustration at the beginning. Okay, so that's the next thing, last written slash, and then the beginning of the oral stuff. And then next, continuing with words, I found this book, A History of Words for Children, 
And this book, I just thought it'd be fun to, to read together a very short snippet of it every day. So, like the first word, how do we use words? And it has like little, you know, like little word bubbles, comic type bubbles, whatever, speech bubbles. And it talks about the beginning of language. So maybe like one day we'll just read this paragraph. And then maybe the next day we'll read this, this paragraph. So we'll just slowly kind of read this together to learn about all these different things about writing tools and reading words and the first readers, all these different little things about facts about words. And I thought that would be fun because she's really interested in stuff like that right now. So yeah, I just got that book. That'll be one of our oral readers. And then the next oral reading book I got is Illustrated Edgar Allan Poe, 25 Essential Poems. So since this is 25 essential poems, I think we'll do this one day a week because we would get through it very quickly. I mean, I guess I could buy other poets. I haven't thought about that. Maybe I'll leave that up to her. So I think I will go ahead and look. I love making these videos because it gives me more ideas about stuff. And so I'm going to go ahead and look and see if they have other poets. And that's what I might do. I might give, I'll just give her the option. So you know, this is a poem, beautiful, beautiful illustration. So yeah, so it has like a little section on the side, like engage, imagine, define, define the word. And then you can like, where do you notice repetition most in this poem? So um, I love that, how it's like uh, helpful to me, like with doing poetry with her, it doesn't come naturally to me at all to like talk about poetry or discuss poetry. Like I took poetry classes in college and like, I don't know, like I'm just like, I'd rather just like read a poem and just like let it simmer in my head or something. But like, so I like how this book like gives you like little things to, you know. Yeah, so yeah, I'm not sure that's another thing. Um, this is the book I'm using for poetry. I'm not sure how we're gonna do it one day a week or every day or, or et cetera, et cetera. So I might, I might go back and put it in the school nest planner to do it one day a week. I might add that in. But yeah, so that's what we got for poetry. And then the last thing for language arts as oral reading is we're going to continue this Aesop's Illustrated Fables. So if you followed me in fifth grade, you would have noticed that we use this as our main oral reading book for fifth grade. And we are... We are like a little bit less than halfway through it and my daughter loves it, I love it. It's just a very, very short way to read a story together and it's just like, you know, Aesop's Fable. So some are, you know, like three or four sentences and it has like the little a lesson or whatever and then some of them are, are longer, but none of them are even, like this one, like is this is long for this book, which is still not very long, you know. This one's like a page and a half and then it has like the moral or whatever on the back. So most of them are very short and i love the illustrations so the last thing i just kind of want to include with language arts is i just borrowed this fun little little snap pop whatever you call these um keyboard i i wanted her to start practicing like keyboarding stuff like that because i did get her keyboarding without tears so i just got her this it's just kind of fun it's just like a toy kind of you could say that yeah so now I'm going to take my camera to show you guys her books because I put all of those on a shelf. So I'm going to quickly go over her books. Follow me if you aren't already, if you're subscribed, because I do monthly updates of what she reads. But I'm just going to quickly tell you the titles. Okay, so this is her homeschool area. This is like her wall, her little wall um, bookshelf. And then... These are like the um, picture books. So even though she's like, you know, sixth grade, I still like to get her picture books. And I really love these because like, what do you do with an Kobe, Ray my Kobe Yamada, different illustrators, but what do you do with an idea? What do you do with a chance? What do you do with a problem? And then maybe uh, this one's a different illustrator. So I really like these because, you know, I think any age could like books like this. And so I'm gonna put these up here, but I just took them off for a minute. So some of these are new. This one we already had, but okay. So I actually had a homeschool cart and I actually, we have like three cards. She has a book cart, I have a book cart, and then we have a homeschool cart. And then I wanted a cart for something else in my house. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna have like four carts, which is just fine. But I was like, you know what? We're not even really using it that much. So I put everything that was in the homeschool cart 
I put like most of it, the stuff we use every day for homeschool in this. This is like little Divya basket I already had. And then this is like the stuff we pretty much use every day for homeschool. And then I have a little plastic container underneath. We have a little shelf underneath this table with like the extra stuff, like the extra glue. I just put like one glue in here and like extra art supplies and stuff are pretty much in that container. And this is just the stuff that we're gonna be using pretty much every day. So that's pretty simple. And here's our book stand. And this is pretty much everything we keep on the homeschool desk. And then, so yeah, let me go over these books. These are just Paper Wishes, Light Fall, uh, Amulet, Mistress, Mashems. Let's see, is it Repose? Yeah, Repose, um, Ophie's Ghost, R The Railway, let's see, The Railway Children, Moomin, Moomin Land, if I'm saying that correctly, right, okay. Little, A Little Princess, The Jungle Book, Midnight Without a Moon, Five Children, and It, The Davenports, The Gilded Girl, The Rabbit's Gift, The War That Saved My Life, A Tell, Magnolias, Beyond the Bright Sea by Lauren Wilk, and then Lois Lowry, Number the Stars. So those are all her readers, her independent readers that she read for 35 minutes for sixth grade. And then, yeah, and then I pretty much just kind of put these on here, you know, cause these she'll be reading so quickly. They don't really fit that well, but I don't really have another place to put them. I have a very small homeschool space is actually in our dining room. So yeah, so I put those here and those will just be something she'll read really quick, but I just like exposing her to picture books like that of like such high quality. And I really love his writing and stuff like that. So referring to the student planning notebook, what I have scheduled so far is so Monday and Tuesday we do science. So we're focusing on the human body for sixth grade. So I wrote in here on Monday, we will re um, read Welcome to the Museum book and the body book, workbook, and this little activity book goes with the Welcome to the Museum book. And then, so let's start there. Let's start on Mondays. After she finishes math and language arts, we move on to science on Mondays. And this is what she will do on Monday. Basically, this is our main book. If you wanna call it our spine. I love the Welcome to the Museum series books. And this one is beautiful. So this one focuses on the human body. And this was the main book I chose for sixth grade. So I really like how it has all the different par um, parts of the human body, you know, separated. And I use this as a guide, as a guide for this book. So I went in this book, this is a body book. This is, so I went ahead and looked at the different sections that has this book. So basically you have to make copies of this book on your printer because it's not you know it's double page so that's fine i haven't made the copies yet but so basically i went ahead and wrote like the chapters in this book that correlate to the projects in this book so yeah so chapter one which is the muscular musculoskeletal system we have the joints on page 61 it's for chapter one and then we also have how muscles move bones for chapter one and so let me show you guys so basically yeah so i went ahead and marked it like page 49 and page 124 so on page 49 we have the skeleton so that will go, that will match up with what we're reading. So on Mondays, we will read a certain part of this book. And then we will, we will do this project. And yeah, so this is actually making a skeleton model and it has like different things you can do with it. And I'm definitely gonna make videos in the future, you guys. Like I'm gonna make a specific science video, a specific history video, a specific language to go like more in depth of like how I'm liking this stuff, how we're using it, stuff like that. But yeah, so I did get this. So make copies and she'll be making a skeleton and stuff like that. So this is what I got to go with 
this book and then so yeah so that's this book this is our main book that will go with this on mondays and then also got this this is the activity book that goes with it now this book loosely kind of it doesn't like match up perfectly or anything like that it doesn't like show you like oh like in this chapter or anything like that i mean i could probably go through it and do that but i'm just gonna be very laid back with this book because there's like a variety of information it all it all it all relates but i'm not gonna match it up i'm just gonna have her do a different page every day and she she will be able to make the connections and it has like the answers on the back just a very simple let's like th like this is like how to draw an eye so you know it it connects with the other book but i don't feel like it has to connect like like the body book will so i'm just gonna have her kind of just do this so i just wanted to get it because it goes with it sort of so that that's our main books and then going relating back to the schedule and then so on Tuesdays when we continue science and moving on from that she will be doing what I call her science readers so let me show you I got four science readers for the year this is the good germ hotel this is a museum of body leftovers this is us born see inside your body and this is that's life looking for all the living things around you so basically she will be rotating these um throughout the year so let's say whatever one she wants to start with she can so she can, let me show you them first and then i'll show you guys we're going to be using the science notebook so basically this one is called that's life and it's like biology and i really like the illustrations so this will be her first one to choose what well, anyone she can choose whatever order and then this is like you know lift the flaps so i love these us born lift the flaps sorry it's like not coming okay so it has like so much information you can get out of the flaps so and this is a museum of odd body leftovers I showed pretty much all of these in my haul. Okay, so then this one is the Good Germ Hotel. Meet your body's marvelous microbes. This one's shorter. This one's like kind of like a picture book length. So basically, what I told her to do, what I'm gonna have her do on the on the Tuesday with science, is she. Like I said, we're going to like rotate. So she, whatever book she picks first, say she picks this one, we're going to do this one first. And then when she finishes this one, we're going to move on to the next one. Whatever one she picks first, I want her to use the science notebook also from School Nest. Has a temperature tracker. I think that might be fun to do. She likes to check the temperature on my weather on my phone. So I like how it's like a little temperature tracker. And then scientific method okay and so basically this one similar format to the other notebook i showed you guys from school nest has like little dotted left side and then this side what i like about it it has the blank space to draw like draw and write so what i want her to do is on tuesdays whatever she reads like you know she's going to be reading like a section of say this book say she picks this one and she reads about the germ-free zone I want her to read out the germ-free zone and then I want her to go ahead and document some things that she read in here. So I'm going to leave it up to her, but this is going to be something that's going to have evolve, evolve as the school year begins or, and, you know, like progresses. I'm going to have make sure she's doing enough or tell her like, so I'm going to have her draw something she read about or from one of the illustrations and then write a little bit something, whether she does like a definition or like a paragraph or like whatever it is like or even like maybe we watch a video on it so um, this book is just gonna be like gonna kind of go um evolve with her throughout the sixth grade year with science based on those four books that she's reading so yeah so i wanted her to get some writing and some illustrations and stuff like that out of these books so i thought that'd be fun we'll see how it goes for science continuing okay, so that was monday tuesday after math and language arts science and then on wednesdays and thursdays 
we do history and geography. So on Wednesdays, referencing this planner, on Wednesday, on Wednesdays, I wrote history, independent reading, everything you need to ace American history. So basically, we studied American history for fifth grade, and we used this book mainly, and we did not get through it. We used this book, and we also used this book a little bit, which is DK Smithsonian American History, a visual encyclopedia. I felt like this book didn't really have enough information per topic, but then I felt like everything you need to ace American history had a little bit like, almost like too, too much information for us to finish a chapter and do oral reading. So I got, I combined these books together to get her to have like the visual pictures and stuff, like illustrations, stuff like that. So this book and this book will be something she'll be doing on Wednesdays. What I'm going to call independent reading time for history. So basically, we got this far. We got up to chapter 24, which is like, you know, up to like the 1860s. So we did all of this in fifth grade together. So I don't particularly enjoy this book. I'm just going to say it. It's like, I think it's a very nice book, but I think it will work better for her as an independent read versus us reading it together. And at the end, so at the end, it has these little questions, you know, check your knowledge questions. And then like, you know, it has the answers right on the back. So I'm going to have her read this by herself. One chapter. I'm going to have her finish the whole chapter. She can read much quicker, you know, silently than we can rotating together. Um, neither one of us really like oral reading. <laughs> and so I'm going to have her read one chapter every Wednesday. And then I'm going to I'm gonna get involved by asking her the questions. So I'm going to ask her the questions. And then it has, like, the answers on the back. So I'm, we're not going to read it together anymore. I think that's what we're going to do. I'll always change things, but that's my plans to have her read it independently and then do the questions together. Okay, so that is for Wednesday. Now, this is just going to be kind of like a reference book. I'm not really using it for much, like, but I want to encourage her to get it out and kind of correlate it with this book. Another thing I forgot to include, you guys, sorry, for Wednesdays is this D.K. Smith, Smithsonian, the President's book. We got up to president that like the 20th or 19th or 20th president like so basically when we would get to a president in this book I would have her get we would at the end of uh, at the end of the history time we would just read over this together so she likes she really likes this book like sometimes I would forget and she'd be like oh we forgot to get the president book out so this will be combined with you know with this book these three books will be for Wednesday Thursday is history and geography. I'll show you geography in a second, but the first thing is I got, I'm continuing with School Nest. This is my first year using School Nest. I know a lot of people use it, but School Nest, I got a history timeline notebook. And basically, we're kind of starting late because it starts to be prehistory, and we're not, we're literally not starting this until, literally starting this in the 1800s. But you know, I told her we could probably. Well, we, we're probably going to go back and cycle through history the next year. So when we wrap up modern history, we're probably going to start over again at like ancient or something like that. So our prehistory and then ancient. So I got this book. It starts at the beginning when it's like my history, if you want to do your own history. And then of course, it starts at like prehistory, you know, and then ancient times. So we're going to start all the way, you know, wherever we are in the modern times in the 1800s. So what I want her to do on Thursdays is I got these three books, 20th Century American History for Kids, 20th Century American History, I'm sorry, Women's History for Kids, and then 20th Century African American History for Kids. So I want her to... Pick the first, like, so, okay, so 1901 to 1920, she's going to read that. And then, so 1900, she will go in her timeline for 1900 and, you know, write about the suffrage move, movement. She will read it, and then she'll write something in her timeline about this date. And so I want her to kind of rotate these books. 
So for example, this American history book, the first date is 1903. So she can use all of these books together, you know, to complete the entire timeline. And if she has like two dates that are similar, I'm just gonna have her, if she can fit them both or just uh, pick one, but she just can still read about them. So we're just gonna be kind of using this, these three books to complete the timeline. Okay. Now, continuing, this is for I got for geography. I just went ahead and put geography on the schedule. So I noticed I did put geography for Wednesday. So sorry that I'm out of order, but you guys get the picture. So basically, it will be on Wednesdays after she does the independent reading, those three books I showed you guys for history. We will do this together. This is National Monuments of the USA. I just got like a really simple book for geography. We're still studying u.s geography because i just kind of matched it because we're still doing u.s history so um we will be doing this two-page spread together it's all we do in one day is a two-page spread and we'll just kind of read the facts together make sure we point out which state you know the statue of liberty is in etc cetera, etc cetera. and it'll just be a simple little two-page spread like a visual learning book for geography so we, since we do art Monday through Friday, after, like I told you guys, science and history, except on Fridays, you know, there's no science or history, but so Monday through Thursday, what I wrote on Mondays, so on Mondays for art, so yeah, so Mondays for art, I wrote art for kids drawing. So this will be our main book. We will do this together on Monday. So basically, here's a table of contents and... Basically, so like chapter one, it just talks about different ways of seeing and look and just like, you know, different like concepts and stuff like that. And then it has like a, um, it has a project. It's like abstract magic, trace the four blank squares below onto a piece of paper. Next draw each of the abstract designs on page 19 into one of the blank boxes in your paper. So basically we will do one of these lessons every Monday and then I got this mixed media pad and then I also got this blank sketchbook so whatever we decide to use I think if it's like a more creative project we'll use this and if it's more of like kind of just like an exploratory lesson where she's just learning like a concept we'll use the sketchbook so I got these two as the main books to go with all of her art and then, so that's what we're doing every Monday. Every Monday we do one lesson from this. And drawing is going to be the focus this year for art. I just, she really likes drawing in her free time. That's her thing. And I really wanted to just focus on drawing for sixth grade as our art medium. And then for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday she will do this and we have a special art project on fridays i'll show you guys so these were the two books i got i used one of these for fifth grade and now i got two more how to draw all the things for kids and how to draw all the animals so those will specifically these will specifically be used with this sketchbook and this is like how to draw all the animals it's very simple I think a lot of different ages could use this book. I don't think it's like too young because like it gives her a little short introduction to drawing her fog, which is not really something she draws in her personal time. So I thought it'd be a really nice, cute little drawing book to add all these little things you can learn how to draw in a very quick, quick, efficient way. And she, it, it'll be up to her if she wants to add color pencils or, you know, color them or whatever. We're probably not going to focus a lot on painting, to be honest, for sixth grade. But whatever like dry, dry medium she wants to use, she can also do in her sketchbook from the, with these, or she can just do them in pencil. But it also has like kind of like a little sense about the animal up here. So then after she finishes this, because I know she'll finish it pretty quick because the one we had for fifth grade, she finished it like way, you know, probably like halfway through the year, if not before. So after she finishes this or vice versa, whichever one she picks first, she will move on to this one. This one's just like a variety of objects that you can draw.
So that will be what we're doing for art, like I mentioned. Yeah, so Thursday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Okay, you guys. So then on Fridays, this is her special project because... She still wants to be an architect. My daughter wants to be an architect, but she wants to also be possibly like do illustration on the side or something like that. And so I got her this book before they were artists, famous illustrators as kids. And it basically highlights these different illustrators. So what we're going to do is each month we're going to pick a different illustrator. So like say, so I have for September wanda gag and so she illustrated millions of cats this is the only book we have by her but then i'm going to be using the library as a reference to fill these in so the first the first friday that she starts this book she will read she will read about the illustrator and then we will take time we won't do all this like in one day because it'll be like the whole month so i'm gonna um we're gonna take it kind of slow and so then i will be checking out whatever books the library has with the exception of Hayao Miyazaki, because he is, you know, he has like animation, animated movies, you know, My Neighbor Totoro, How's Moving Castle, Spirited Away. So we have some of these movies, but the ones we don't have, like we'll be like watching them throughout that month and things like that. But he, everyone else like is mostly like picture books. So I'm gonna have her read the picture book and look at the illustrations and stuff like that. I'm gonna have her do some research on the illustrator, like, pretty much expanding the project like big time so when she does wanda gag i'm gonna check out the library books that month or whatever and then she i might have her like draw some cats from this book as inspiration so i'm gonna have her do like extra art projects so yeah so that's what we're gonna be doing as a kind of a side project for art i also have this you know classic whether all things are because marie sendak is one of the illustrators so yeah, so that will be her special art project with the illustration. Now now I think what I have left to show you guys is the Friday stuff. The main focus on Fridays, other than I told you guys, she'll be doing the extra, like the one little handwriting book, maybe that, maybe the other grammar, I mean, sorry, writing book, I'm not sure, for language arts. But Fridays go pretty quick. She does math, of course, on Fridays, and then like a couple language arts things. We don't do any of the oral language arts stuff or anything like that. So this year for Logic, I got her smart games cats and boxes just a little logic game that you can pretty much do by yourself as like a one player she loves these we collect these and this is a cat one and then i got her how many guinea pigs can fit on a plane and then logic lift off so i'm not sure how we're gonna do these yet i think i might have her so this is just like a little question and answer focusing on math it's like how many birds would it take so it has like a question that has like an answer. So I think I might have her read one of these first and then do a logic lift off page. And then these she really loves. This is like a game to her. So she'll, she'll like doing this too. And then the last thing I got her to do on Fridays is this little like book, uh, Celebrate Your Body. So because, you know, she's 11 now, she's in that age group for a book like this. So I thought this would be nice for her to read on her own. So I'm going to tell her. So I'm going to have her decide how much she wants to kind of read a little bit. Like some of the chapters are kind of long. So maybe whatever she wants to do and bookmark it. So this will be something that she reads on her own independently. I think um, I hope I'm including everything. The only other thing I want to say is that she is doing Latin over the summer. I mentioned that, but I think we might continue that through sixth grade. But that is something she does like on her own because she wanted to learn that. She wanted to learn Latin. Like she just came up with it on her own. And she's like, she the idea of learning Latin. So I'm not, I don't think I'm going to put it on the schedule. But I did go ahead and buy her another Latin book. I didn't show it in this video because, like I said, I'm not, like, putting it on the schedule. I'm just kind of letting her do, like, self-led learning with that. But we might do a little bit more of that for sixth grade. Oh, another thing I want to mention. So I am going to sign her up for another class. I'm looking on OutSchool right now. She does take a Minecraft class. I mentioned that she does piano at home. And then I think I'm going to sign her up for some type of other, like, like, age or pro like you know, like something educational on, on OutSchool.com. 
So I'm going to do that. And then I mentioned that illustration was our main focus for sixth grade because I told you guys I always like to pick something. Architecture was kind of our focus for fifth grade, but then we quickly learned architecture was very hard to kind of teach and put in the curriculum. So she kind of just like builds in her free time with magnet tiles, and I just kind of kept it at that. We didn't really keep it on the schedule very much. And then illustration is just something that's going to be her main focus and then creating a picture book. But I'm going to show you guys as we progress. Thank you so much for being here. I'd really love for you to like, subscribe, comment. I love everyone who is here supporting my channel, watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks so much. Bye.